Friends and brethren, our devotional today in this God's Word for Today devotional is on Job chapter 21, verses 1 to 34, but let me read to us the first 10 verses only. Then Job answered and said, Keep listening to my words, and let this be your comfort. Bear with me, and I will speak. And after I have spoken, mock on. As for me, is my complaint against man? Why should I not be impatient? Look at me and be appalled and lay your hand over your mouth. When I remember, I am dismayed and shuddering seizes my flesh. Why do the wicked live, reach old age and grow mighty in power? Their offspring are established in their presence and their descendants before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear and no rod of God is upon them. Their bull breeds without fail. Their cow calves and does not miscarry. They send out their little boys like a flock, and their children dance. They sing to the tambourine and the lyre, and rejoice to the sound of the pipe. They spend their days in prosperity and in peace. They go down to shoal. And this question that Job said, why do the wicked live? And they grow old age, and then they prosper. This was one of the questions that Job asked here in his defense. Job had argued with wit and against Jophar and the others who have a different view because his friends insisted that the wicked will be always punished and the righteous will be always rewarded. Therefore, in their view, Job suffered because of somehow wickedness and evil that he did. However, Job differed. As we had learned in the past chapters, they were always in, in uh, head-on because his friends were insisting that Job did something wicked, but Job said he was innocent. Based upon Job's observations, he built his case that the wicked seemed to thrive and suffer not, or suffer only little for the retribution of their sins. Here, he took a more detailed view of the issue of evil. And this troubled him. Actually, this complaint had similarity to Asaph. In Psalm 73, verse 1 to 14, which was written by Asaph many years later. The problem of evil has been felt and wrestled since the earliest times of Job and Asaph. So the question, why does the wicked prosper, has been a question lingering in all generations, even until now. Is this your question? Have you heard this from your friend or from somebody who asked this question? Why does the righteous suffer? Yet, here we know that Job has been troubled by this thought. Yet, his friends were not thinking about this. They were thinking differently. This was not the mind of his friends. Thus he said to them, keep listening to my words and let this be your comfort. Bear with me and I will speak. And after I have spoken, mock on. It is as if that they were not listening. They were not able to get what Job was saying. So like Asaph, many years later, Job expressed this dismay. He said this in verse 6 and 7. When I remember, I am dismayed, and shuddering seizes my flesh. Why do the wicked live, reach old age, and grow mighty in power? Yes, this is really something that will trouble us in many ways, and some of us have been affected badly, especially for us who have been oppressed by by somebody who is in authority, using his power to abuse and oppress us. And we look unto the Lord and say, where is justice in this? This is unfair. Why God, who is so loving, 
and he is just and his powerful ways that he allowed this. These questions may not be answered in our lifetime, but God has his own reasons. Job observed that the wicked prosper in life, their livestock increase, and they enjoy life, even their family and everything that surrounds in their lives until they go down to Sheol. It seems that there's their death is just there, there's no suffering. They just are enjoying life until their death. Ironically, Job observed that these people afforded themselves to challenge God in arrogant spirit. They said, as Job read, uh, wrote here in verse 14, 15, or said here in verse 14, 15, they say to God, depart from us. We do not desire the knowledge of your ways. What is the Almighty that we should, be, should, should serve him? And what profit do we get if we pray to him? The same experience that Aesop wrote in Psalm 73 when he said, when I think to know this, I've been troubled from within. So that was the feeling of a prophet or a psalmist who saw the prosperity of the wicked weeks had nearly caused his stumbling. Upon seeing these things, upon observing these things, that the wicked prosper and the righteous are suffering, he chided his friends. Job chided his friends. He said to them, Behold, I know your thoughts and your schemes to wrong me. For you say, where is the house of the prince? Where is the tent in which the wicked live? This is what he said in verse 27 and 28, implying that these friends really had been accusing him that because of your wickedness, Job, where is your tent now? Where is your house now? What happened to your family? He concluded even in verse 34, how then will you comfort me? With empty nothings. There is nothing left of your answers but falsehood. Yes, as we look into the scriptures, the wicked prosper here and temporarily here in this world. And sometimes they prosper at the expense of the righteous. There are so many people today who are enriching themselves with the riches of the world because they oppress the poor. They had laborers in their companies that they didn't provide the basic standards of compensation. They didn't um, give the privileges and basic um, just and fair treatment and pay to their laborers. And they are enriching themselves with money. The rich are becoming richer and the poor becoming poorer. Yet, at the end of the day, we know that there is God who is not sleeping or God is not slumbering. He allowed this to happen for a reason. As the psalmist said in Psalm 76 verse 10, Surely the wrath of man will press you. The remnant of wrath you will put on like a belt. Somehow God has allowed this to happen. We call this the permissive will of God for a reason. Like for example, he allowed Pharaoh to oppress the nation of Israel for 400 years until the time that Moses came in and the Lord showed his power through the ten plagues. And the ten plagues display the glory on the power of God. God was more glorified when Pharaoh hardened his heart. Like Asaph, we must resolve that even though we don't understand why this world is becoming more evil and there are people who are, who are thriving because of their evil deeds and it seems that they are not and they are not suppressed and they continue to do evil things. But let's resolve to worship God. Even though Esau observed these things are going on that the proud and the arrogant continue to prosper in the wickedness. But he said, his testimony in Psalm 73 verse 17, he said, 
until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. Their end will console us, will comfort us that there will be a justice someday. someday. They will face God someday. It pays to be faithful before our God because our God is in control. He's always on his throne. But although he allowed this evil, this wickedness to proliferate in our generations, this world is really not becoming any better at all. Yet at the end of the day, there will be a kind of time of judgment. The Apostle Peter said that the time will come, that when Jesus will come, that this world will be burnt with fire. This will be melted with fire. And those of us who have the hope in Christ can just look into that with that hope with expectation in our hearts so that we will not be affected by all these happenings in this world. Let's just look unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, and be encouraged. Let's not be wary in well-doing, for we receive the promise of God if we faint not. Let us pray. Father, thank you that the word is eternal. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. And thank you that your word is our source of hope and comfort in these times of confusion, Lord, where we see evil around us. Somehow, perhaps some of our listeners who are watching our video and listening our podcast might have experience like Job, like Asaph, questioning sometimes why evil triumph, why evil continues. Thank you, Lord, that we can look into the testimonies of Job, especially Asaph also. Help us to worship you. Help us that we will be in your presence, that we'll be able to see the end of the wickedness and evil of things in this world. Thank you, Lord, that you are our God that we can look unto and we can have the strength, Lord, despite of all these challenges that we face even today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.